There, I caught it. Welcome to the At Home Sunday meeting. We want to have some fun together. And I'm having fun right here at Penn Treaty Park in the River Wards in Philadelphia. Right behind me, you see the Delaware River. We love the Delaware River in, in, in Circle of Hope because we, are, we, we initially were a Philadelphia uh, region-based church, but then we expanded to South Jersey too and we realized, you know, there can't be a river that gets between us. We still can love one another and connect with one another despite whatever barriers are between us. You know, man-made barriers, human-made barriers, they're not gonna limit us from connecting with one another. And just now we're breaking through another barrier right here through the screen, we're connecting with you from wherever you are as well. So just as the river doesn't keep us from one another, neither does any other barrier. And we can still connect with one another and love one another and worship together and have fun together. I hope tonight is, a, is, an, is an evening for you that helps you have fun with one another, with God, through worship, through prayer, through connection. A lot of ways you can do that tonight and our team will guide you through that. But for now, why don't you tell us what watershed you're coming from? I'm in the Delaware River watershed. You might know what watershed you're from. And if not, just tell us where you're coming from. We want to know how to connect with you. We want to know that you're here, that you're present with us, because you're helping to make this meeting happen from wherever you are. That's the idea. So this is a, this is a live and, and connective experience. And you commenting in the chat throughout the meeting is a good way to do that. And also, because we want to connect via our relationships, Go to circleofhope.church slash online meeting and sign in. Let us know that you are here. Knowing that you are here helps us relate to you and connect to you as well. And if you're up for it, the second half of this meeting, we have an after hang on Zoom. You can stay on for that. We'll provide you with the link. And then we'll have some talk back, dialogue, and relationship building time live on Zoom as well. So there's a lot of ways for you to connect with us, just like this river shows us how we're connected with one another. Um, the, the creation around me, full of joy, full of the Spirit of God, that's what's connecting us to one another. Our, live, our lived experience, our shared humanity, and our common experience in this world, in this, as, as creatures in the world, in the creation together, that helps us connect with one another. So I hope that this imagery around me uh, motivates you to know that we're intimately connected, even through a screen. And the people that are gonna help you stay connected to the meeting, we call them our hosts. I'm gonna pass the ball to them right now, and they'll be able to tell you who you, they are and so you can identify them and so you can relate to them too. So welcome again to the At Home Sunday Meeting. I'm so glad you're here. Be sure to sign in if you haven't. We definitely want to connect with you. Here are our hosts. Hey, I'm Robert. I use he, him pronouns. I'm part of Circle of Hope from way up here in Minnesota and I'll be one of your hosts for the At Home Sunday Meeting. Hi, I'm Damian Washington. He, him pronouns, and I'm coming to you from Northeast Philly, and I'm one of their hosts for an online meeting of Circle of Hope. He pulled up at his parents' house around 9 on Sunday morning. He knew the coffee pot would have just shut off after two hours of being on, and his mom would have just turned it back on to keep it warm a little longer. His parents liked to linger in bed on Sundays, reading the paper and drinking their coffee. He longed to linger in their unhurried approach to the day. He was stopping by because a big decision weighed heavily on him, and he was hoping they could lighten the load. He helped himself to some of the remaining coffee as they joined him at the kitchen table. His folks knew why he was there, but they didn't press him. They talked about the weather and some of their ailments as they aged. Had he heard about his high school's robotics team and how they were doing this year? They knew how much he enjoyed being on the team during his high school career. They talked about the news a little and asked him what he'd been reading lately. When the small talk seemed about as done as the coffee, they decided to take a walk together with the dog, just like old times. The old boy was slowing down, but seemed to keep pace with his parents just fine, maybe because they were slowing down a little too. They walked in silence for a while, enjoying the crisp fall air and the colorful leaves. He wanted to ask them what he should do about this big decision of his, but there is something about the rhythm of their steps together 
Something about the feel of the dog's leash in his hand where it had rested so many times. Something about the sight of his parents' hands comfortably clasped together with well-worn grooves where they had come together so often. That all gave him pause. He looked at his parents and smiled. And they responded with loving nods of affirmation. And in that moment, he realized that the weight of trying to figure out what he should do had lessened. It wasn't gone, but he remembered that whatever he did, he wouldn't be alone. And then it struck him that underneath the big question he was facing were some more basic questions like, do you love me? And are you with me? His parents' eyes said it all. Of course. Always. They rounded the bend toward home, and his parents asked if he could stay for lunch. Of course, he said. Always. Hey friends, Johnny again, he, him. I want us to enter into a time of worship together. Worship is about adoring God and adoring Jesus, and it works really well when we can do it together. And don't forget, we are together tonight. We are doing something together. And I want, I want you to feel that sense of community. So during worship, when Nathan is leading you to worship, when Andrew and the team are leading you to worship, go ahead and comment in the chat, connect, repeat the lines, praise God together, and then try to, try to feel it within yourself as well. Enter into this time in your body, in your spirit, and try to experience it. Sing along if you're able to. Stand in spirit or, or physically stand if you're able and connect with God that way. Sing out loud. Fill the room with your voice. Get your whole family to do it too. These kind of uh, shared experiences really do help us worship. And we're specifically focusing on a theme of water today and throughout this season. So there's going to be a couple songs that are rooted in that. We're going to worship with creation and we're going to, we're going to worship the fount as well, who is Jesus in the final song. But to begin with, Nathan is going to give us a song that he composed. That She greets the same friends every Wednesday Plays the same word games they don't suspect a thing She can't show the bullet holes in her soul Afraid of what they might say He walks the stage barely awake didn't get much sleep last night He won't say why Doesn't believe A single word he speaks But they applaud And he preaches on When you're stuck in a prison Dead-ended by your good intentions You got in deep And you need a key I heard of one that could set you free Honesty, a little bit of authenticity, say words you really mean, try a little bit of honesty, when you know that something's wrong, spirit's gone but the show goes on, you play a little puppet made out of pride when you've Lost God, but keep the facade with questions you can't ask Cause you don't know where they lead So you shroud it all in secrecy And bleed into your diary And bury all the evidence Afraid it won't make any sense I've been there, my friend And if you want some breeze You gotta try a little honesty To say what's really going on with me You think you always need certainty But have you tried a little honesty? Together, if you don't see all the pieces and facts, don't go away with make believe. 
Well, the roots are sometimes bitter, but the fruit they grow is sweet, and the truth might not be pretty, but it always sets you free. Takes a little bravery You never know where the road could lead But we all need a little honesty Honesty Just say what you're thinking Sometimes I wonder what the world could be If we all tried a little honesty Honesty To say what's really going on with me When you're stuck and you need a key Try a little bit of honesty feel like to be alive living you stand under a waterfall you leave the sleeping shore deliberately you shed your dusty clothes pick your barefoot way over the high slippery rocks hold your breath choose your footing and step into the waterfall the hard water pelts your skull bangs and bits on your shoulders and arms the strong water dashes down beside you, and you feel it along your calves and thighs, rising roughly back up, up to the roiling surface, full of bubbles that slide up your skin or break on you at full speed. Can you breathe here? Here, where the force is the greatest, and only the strength of your neck holds the river out of your face. Yes, you can breathe even here. You could learn to live like this. And you can, if you concentrate, even look out at the peaceful far bank where you try to raise your arms. What a racket in your ears. What a scattershot pummeling. It is time pounding at you. Time. Knowing you are alive is watching on every side your generation's short time falling away as fast as rivers drop through air and feeling it hit.
my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love here i raise my ebenezer here by thy great help i've come and i Wandering from the fold of God, He to rescue me from danger, interposed His precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a death! Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to be Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it Seal it for Thanks, team. That was beautiful. I was really feeling the words of that. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. I was feeling that this week. Um, and myself, we were talking about all the, the forces and influences that can take us in different directions. Um, someone was asking, how can, how can people who are, say they're following Jesus, be going in opposite directions? How do we know God's will and, and follow it with any confidence? What is God's will for my life and, and in our life together? We're asking questions like that this summer uh, to hold our questions out to God and to one another. Because asking what we're really thinking is pro possibly more important for our spiritual development than we even realize. So we're taking real questions from people and agreeing with the question and considering them together. So what is God's will for my life? I suspect we've all asked this question uh, at one point or another. It often comes up at a major transition or when there's a, a big decision, but I think it's a live question for us, all of us, all the time, uh, throughout our whole journey of faith. Discerning God's will is, is not just about making a big decision but about learning to attend to God's presence with us at, in every stage of our lives and every decision that we make. We are all interested in finding our place and making meaningful contributions in the world, uh, significant relationships, our work, other things contribute to our, our sense of well-being and belonging. So in seeking God's will for our lives, it makes sense that we want to choose the right thing and decide the right way. Jesus offers us two very clear um, commandments that address God's will for our lives, for how we are to live. In Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. He was quoting the Old Testament law from in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And then Jesus adds to that. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All of the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Jesus is saying these are the most important things. Work out loving me, the one true God, and others as yourself. That's my will for you in your life. Everything else you do falls under these two commandments. The Apostle Paul echoes uh, this when he writes in 1 Corinthians 13 that everything comes out of this love. If I speak with tongues of angels but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can understand all mysteries and have all knowledge but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor but have not love, I gain nothing. Paul understands that all of the gifts all of the sacrifices, all of the best words are nothing without love. We can do a lot of great things. There are endless good causes and jobs and efforts to do in the world, but unless it flows out of love for God and others, we're missing it. So how do we work out a love for God? That involves all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the will of God for us. And how do we love our neighbors as ourselves? They are both so big and so deep, and we are such complex human beings that we could spend a lifetime working out that kind of love. Yes, I think Jesus is saying yes. Spend a lifetime working out that kind of love. He said, you, you have heard it said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And now love your neighbor as yourself. This is hard to do. What, what does it even look like on a daily basis? We're, we're wired for our own survival in so many ways. There are countless decisions and interactions and choices that we make daily that are driven by factors other than love. And Jesus says to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will find it. That's Matthew 26, 24 through 26. Jesus' call to give up our own way is an invitation into his way of love. He came to inaugurate the, the kingdom of God, to bring a reign of love into the world. He came to conquer everything that afflicts us and the world. Sin, suffering, injustice, racism, poverty, death. As we experience God's healing love, and saving grace, we can, out of our own belovedness before God, take our place with him in his work from wherever we are, in whatever circumstance we're in, from whatever position we have or season of life we are in. God's will for us is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This question of God's will probably most commonly is asked in the context of individual choices or personal questions regarding a life direction. But everything in my week has revolved around communal choices and communal direction and communal questions, particularly in regards to anti-racism work as a church. So I can't help but go there for just a minute. 
God's will for us to love God and others is the foundation to being an anti-racist church. How can we claim to love one another if we do not name the pain caused by racism and white supremacy and then work to change it in our body, in our structures, in our systems? How can we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength if white people like me love the status quo more and want to maintain our comfort? Loving God and neighbor is actually very disruptive work. It, it, is, it is not comfortable or nice for those of us who have had our comfort prioritized and maintained by white supremacy. It requires something new of us, a new way of living and relating. And Jesus shows us that way for all of us, even if the work we have to do is different. Oshita Moore, in her, in her book, Dear White Peacemakers, uh, has been pastoring me on this journey as she, she grounds her work uh, of peacemaking work of anti-racism in the person of Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount, specifically. She writes, Jesus had some nerve, y'all. Right out the gate in Matthew, he begins teaching about the upside-down kingdom of God by saying that everyone who is currently ignored, undervalued, or assumed forgotten by God is actually seen and favored by him. Blessed. She's talking about the Beatitudes. Then he goes on to cast this huge, startlingly beautiful vision of the world made right. And somehow he expects everyone, even the ones in the crowd who were just fine with the way things were, to be like, cool, cool Jesus, when do we start? When do we start suffering for the kingdom that you talk about? Loving others and loving God involves suffering. For white people, we will have to, we, we need to have tough skin and a tender heart, as Oshida says. We will need to learn to grieve and enter into the, the great and unrelenting pain that is caused by white supremacy. Um, she says in entering in when you don't have to, when you could choose to ignore, you're walking in the way of Jesus. To unlock the kind of trust and vulnerability necessary to bring true peace, we must grieve. And as we wade into dismantling white supremacy and white people start to feel like some of the very core things, some very core things are in danger, the invitation is to draw nearer to Jesus. His teachings about meekness and purity of heart and mercy will help those of us who are having a hard time. Oshida invites white peacemakers to allow the love of God to ground us in our belovedness and allow that love to inform how we receive guidance from people of color in our lives. She says, that is what living in covenant with one another is all about. Authentically correcting and courageously connecting with one another. You can't have love without that. I love that she's talking about covenant because living in covenant with each other is, is as a church, is at the heart of us. The center of our gravity as a community is a covenant of love. Jesus told his followers, love one another as I have loved you. Our covenant is about living into that love with each other in this particular time, in our era, in our context, acting as a body, being connected as a visible um, members of, of the church. Just yesterday, we welcomed new covenant members 
uh, into our covenant. And hearing their stories of why God is moving them to do this was a reminder again that the covenant is based on love that Jesus himself gave to us. It's based on the transformation that Jesus offers us. It is our belovedness and the belovedness of others that compels us to relate this way. Our, our postmodern proclivity to may, may make us think that being part of a greater body of Christ, uh, Christianity at large, is um, enough so that we don't have to enter into a specific covenant with a church. Uh, that may be the case, but, but I think the opportunity to join a local body gives us the chance to make faith more than just something extra. Um, it's, it's transformative to how we live because there are people who were committed to living out God's will in our lives and working it out daily together. The commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself is day-to-day -day work. And the explicit context of a local community helps us to practice it. I want us to talk more about this. Um, so I hope that you'll stay for the afterhang. The hosts are going to put that link in the chat for you so you can hop over and we can meet face to face and keep talking about what does this look like through specifically through anti-racism work but in in all aspects of our lives um, but before we do that Johnny's gonna tell us other other ways that our body is connected and then offer a blessing hey friends I'm so glad you worshiped with us tonight it was a blessing to be with you I want you to help expand this meeting to make it fully what it can be one way you can do that again is just to go to circleofhope.church slash online meeting and sign in again. We want to connect with you. We want to relate to you because relationships are the heart of who we are. And while you're online, what you can do is go to circleofhope.church slash cells and you'll find a cell to get connected to. Just like relationships are the center of this meeting, they're the center of our cells. And the cells are a lifeblood for Circle of Hope. Circles of 10 that meet in homes outside usually um, throughout the week and online still as well. An outside cell can still connect you wherever you are. Contact the cell leader and they'll put a screen up for you to zoom right in. But we also have cells that are online still that you can connect to. And we, and we have at least one cell that is specialized to be online to connect with people throughout the country or even people who are disabled and can't make it to the meeting. This is the kind of accessible place we want to be. We want to be as wide reaching as possible. This at home meeting is a new project of ours and we want it to expand. And so three practical ways you can do that are like the video. If you like the video, more people will see it. So that's one thing you can do that's real simple. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a lot of benefits from that. You'll see all of our content and including our audio art music, our podcast, Resist and Restore. You can watch it on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can go find Resist and Restore. Please like, subscribe, and give us a high rating there as well. That's another way to connect with our pastors and our community as well. That's something that subscribing to this channel will give you access to. And once we get up to a thousand subscriptions, we even connect with more people, but also have more features that YouTube gives us. So help us get to our goal of 1000 subscriptions on this channel. That would be a real blessing to us. And then also share the video. Think about people in your life, around the country even, who would be blessed by what we're sharing and then share the video with them. Even if they live in the area, give them a low commitment way to connect Circle of Hope, and then maybe they can even attend one of our uh, meetings that are happening in person right now, or they can stay online and do that because we're trying to create a community online as well. So like the video, subscribe, and share it. And then finally, please share in common with us. Share your money with us. Go to circleofhope.church and there's an opportunity for you to do that. No amount is too little or too great. Five bucks, 5,000 bucks. We'll take anything because we want, we, we want everyone to have a chance to participate in what we're doing. And we also see not only the practicalities of sharing in common, but the fact that sharing in common is an act of worship and an act of love. You are loving one another and also showing the Lord that he is Lord over our, over our money, over our bank account, over our wallets. 
and Jesus being Lord of all of us means even, even Lord of our money. And that act of worship, that act of trust, that act of faith, that changes us. No longer do we have to hold our money so tightly. We can actually share it in common. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a real Jesus way of doing things. And I hope that you can participate in our common fund for that reason as well. Before we go, I want us to conclude thinking of what Julie was saying. What is the will of God for our life? It's a big question. And she answered it beautifully. I'll share one more passage from Galatians. The only thing that matters is faith expressing itself through love, faith working itself out through love. Paul reduces all of the commands to this simple one, just like Jesus did when Jesus said, love God, love others, love one another. That's the greatest commandment. And so I pray that we can share our mutual love with one another and that this, this simple idea can be contained in this expression of the, of the church, the Sunday meeting in cells and in circle of hope. I hope that the love that is flourishing inside of you because of how you relate to God can be shared with others via our church. I pray that you can connect with us further and that this is a blessing to you throughout your week. So go in peace and remember the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love.